Welcome to Rugby Tonight, the best bits. We've got another great show lined up for you as we're joined in the studio by former Wales captain and Bristol forward Ryan Jones. And we have the usual insight and analysis from Martin Bayfield, Austin Healy and Ugo Manya. Enjoy. <laughs> Wow, 2006, Wales sexiest man. Big that was year the first you. sexiest man, not the 2006. The first. The first. And the last. One, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, good to have you here. How, how has life been uh, since retirement? I know you didn't want to retire. The shoulder just, just gave up on you in the summer and, and that was it. Yeah, d different, difficult as we all know. It's something that all sportsmen sadly have to go. You know, we go through two retirements if you like. But um, no, it's been, a, it's been a period of change, but it's been great on from another uh, viewpoint. You know, it's been a Rugby World Cup year, so we've had a fantastic time during that period. Great to spend Christmas with the family. But now it's on to, on to other things now. I guess the disappointment for you is not seeing Bristol's progression into the Premiership. You thought it might happen last year. Looking in pretty good state at the moment in the uh, Green King Championship. Um, how is it down there? How have they dealt with the disappointment and what are their hopes for the next five months? Well, it's been incredibly disappointing. Bristol's a wonderful city with, you know, one and a half million people in who are crying out for top-flight sport. You know? um, and I think the, the rugby club are able to deliver on it. It's, we, have a fan we had a fantastic following. We have a fantastic following. You know? In playing in the championship on a Sunday, we would often get in excess of eight, nine thousand people. So it's it's a great rugby city, and I think just going that for, for the step into the Premiership, I see you, you'll see a totally different Bristol team. They really will ignite, and I think they'll they'll settle in that Premiership nicely. Were they really prepared to spend half a million quid, possibly euro, on Ian Madigan from Leinster? How much cash <laughs> is there down in the West Country? Yeah, I think there's a fair bit, you know. I th but I think they they prepared to do whatever it takes to establish themselves at the top of English rugby where, where they feel, and rightly so, that they belong. For you, what is the standout moment in your career? Is it, is it Grand Slams or is it something more than that? Uh, it's tough, you know, over the, I spent the last six months reflecting on it. I've had some wonderful, wonderful personal accolades, Grand Slam, winning trophies, lifting silverware as a Welshman at Millennium Stadium, you know, is something that we dream of. But you know, on, a, on a stranger note, the, the one moment that sort of stands out for me is this, we, the day we won the hacker, if you like, in 2008, 2008 against New Zealand, where we had a, we had a standoff and sadly the referee didn't blow up then. We still went on and lost the game. But uh -huh. it, was, uh, it was pretty special. It's a great moment. Now, <laughs> I want to look at something here because I noticed... Forgive me for always staring at your groin in matches, <laughs> but I'll explain why. Because you're staring down the All Blacks and you have an interesting place to keep your hat. I hope it's his hat. It's, <laughs> it's safety wear, so it's important you keep the... Um... Yeah, but you can see the players looking at you. I mean, Stephen Jones is clearly about a belly laughing. <laughs> I that think hat then goes on your head. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Richie McCaw was quaking his boots about now, I think, you know, seeing that <laughs> bulge. But, um, <laughs> no, it was something I've never lived down. The, uh, there, there it is again. The, uh, <laughs> That's a you bag. love your scrum hat. It's a, yeah, it's I, a do nice love, I do love my scrum hat. Does a bit of shopping, never gets any money nicked. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> now, we've been asking you for your best pieces of skill for, well, all week, really, and this one stood out. There was a few hoverboards, but this one was our favourite. Let's take a look at it. Nice little kick over the head, then the handstand, and then he goes for the conversion and fails. So we thought that we could potentially just give it a bit of a go with a slightly more talented, uh, well, well, Craig's here as well, uh, two talented ex-rugby players and Craig to see if we can get it going with a bit of adaptation. Let's see if we can do it. First bit's all right. So tight, <laughs> Look at this quote from Richard Cockrell, because questions were asked about the selection that he made. This is what he said. We chose to pick the side. We picked and we backed that decision. I'm not going to make any excuses. So he starts with, uh, with Balmain, Ayurta and Harry Thacker. And maybe, we're not picking on Harry Thacker, but he said that he's a small guy. How does that affect things? This is, our, this is our Leicester front row. This is our Saracens pack. So let's just have the front rows down at the moment. Um, and just explain how you attack uh, maybe a weaker scrummager. Yeah, what we're trying to do is trying to break this bind here and widen these hips. That means the second row then has got to, he's got to make a decision. He either stays with his, with his loose head or he has to stick with his hooker. With, with uh, Duplessis, who's got in, on the engagement, he's just changed his body angle slightly, which means he's just going off his right foot, which widens this off. And it's very difficult for, a, for, a, for any hooker, let alone a smaller hooker, to keep him out of that hole, if you like. And once that's done, it becomes a non-contest because all of a sudden we've got all Scott spines in line, we've got eight guys all united, putting on a lot of pressure for a long, long time against a very disjointed 
Leicester scrum. And this is where that profile comes in. Okay, stand up, guys. We'll let the uh, the rest of the pack get in behind you. What we're talking about profile is actually the shape of the scrum. Yeah, if you look, what, what we want to do, if we just engage slightly further, gently, fellas. So, okay, so we can see the picture here. This is how it should be done. Um, maybe not quite the athletic pose there on, <laughs> uh, on the medic's loose head. But I, I don't fancy him going backwards, mate. Right? He isn't going anywhere, He's not is going he? anywhere. He, That's he, a cornerstone of your pack right absolutely. there. But um, No, what we're, what we're after is a good profile. So essentially, in, it's feet shoulder width apart. It's almost like a squat position horizontally. So we can see here from, from, from the Saracens pack, they're all, it's a perfect straight line. So that means all the force generated from the back through the front is all going in the same direction. It's united. As the ball comes in, all these feet are on the ground and you'll just see a little dip and they'll little dip and they'll go and that because it's 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 united it's disciplined it's very very disciplined the timing is perfect unless the pack you're playing against has got exactly the same discipline and the same and is technically as good a slightly smaller saracens pack can do we've seen the damage they can do clock struck 12 and 2016 arrived a lot of athletes would have got very very excited indeed including our very special guests tonight because you ladies natasha Hunt, Eleni scarrett rachel burford are going to be playing sevens in Rio, the Olympics. How exciting is that? Not just for women's rugby, but for rugby as a whole. Yeah, definitely. I mean, it's, de it's in the back of our minds at the minute. Um, we've got a lot of tournaments to get through. I think we've got eight tournaments to get through before that point, and obviously risk of injury, etc. cetera. Um, just making sure you stay on the ball. But it's going to be incredible. Like, for whoever gets to go out of our squad, it's going to be an unbelievable thing to be part of an Olympic Games and something that everyone's really building towards at the minute. Emily, before we look forward, let's look back as well, because the rise of the women's game has been absolutely sensational. World champions and now Olympic rugby. Do, do you pinch yourself sometimes to think that I'm playing rugby at just the right time? Because this is amazing. Yeah, I think when I first started playing rugby, especially when I first got captain, I never believed that we'd be able to be professional. Um, and now we all do it as, as our job, which is, you know, we do pinch ourselves. It is a dream come true. And, like you say, off the back of 2014, having it now in the Olympics and having that opportunity to play on the greatest kind of global sporting stage that there is, is, you know, it's really exciting for us. Let's talk uh, Olympics, Rachel, and talk what it means, because it is one of those titles which just stirs the spirit and Olympic Games. Yeah, I think it's huge. I think everybody gets behind the Olympic Games, whether you're, it's rugby or it's football. You know, you just look at the women's football and how that took off. And, you know, it's going to reach new fans, new people, and hopefully that's going to, you know, have a, a ripple effect post the Olympic Games that more people want to pick up the rugby and get involved. Let's have a look and see what you've done to get to this point, because there's been various qualifications that have been needed. So you secured qualification back in May and then in October, players from Wales and Scotland joined to become Team GB. Let's talk about this, this getting the players in <laughs> from the other countries. Emily, what's it like suddenly having the Welsh and the Scots alongside you? Yeah, I mean, to start with, it was probably slightly strange, probably more strange for them coming into an English programme. I think if it was the other way around, it'd be, you know, a daunting prospect for us. But they fitted in really well. You know, they're there on merit because they're good enough to be there. And actually, they're putting their hands up as, as much as the rest of us are. And it's creating a really, really kind of um, competitive environment. And, you know, heading towards Rio, it's, it's going to be really tough. Absolutely. And Sasha, let's look ahead then. What comes your way? Because it's going to be pretty, pretty busy. This is the road to Rio. You're going to hear that a lot over the coming <laughs> months. There's a sevens tournament in March. And then that moves on to, to, to more, more tournaments and more competitions. I suppose gelling this side, at, at what stage does it get trimmed down to the squad that heads off to Rio? Oh, so I think we've got a holding camp um, late July. And obviously the Olympics is, takes place the first weekend of August. So we won't know as a squad probably until mid-July who the actual 14 that will travel to Brazil will be. Um, and our squad at the minute is 23, so it's cut substantially. Uh, so yeah, it's just keep your foot in the door, keep your hand up and keep playing well. You picked a nice place for your first Olympics, <laughs> Rio. 6th to the 8th of August in Rio. That's going to be fun. Yeah, it will be incredible. Like, hopefully we just keep our hand up, yeah, and definitely we're all looking to be there, aren't we, as long, as alongside all the other girls, so we'll see. <laughs> Hello guys, I'm ever so sorry that I'm not there tonight. Um, thank you very much for the award. Thank you to the judges and to the members of the public through the Viva Tense Judge for voting for me. 
Um, I wish you all the best. Uh, hopefully, I'll see you guys soon. Did you know that, that Ryan had a trial for Bristol, OK? He Bristol. could have been a goalkeeper, right? We're going to test you to your full here. Do you play any footy at all? Yes. OK, off we go. Ugo, you're up first. Oh, that's oh. a good pen. Oz. Hang on, is the man ready? Off you go. Go, go, go. Oh, oh that's oh. Oh. What a save. Happy to die Top right. well. Oh! Girls, come in. Let's see you hit a few of these. In you go. I'll, I'll go. I'll be the fetcher. Please you keep saving. I'll be the, the fetcher. Goal. Who's up? Here you go, girls. There you go. Oh, oh, oh good. I got, I got it. I got it. OK, Rachel. Oh, God. Oh, oh yes. Yes. One more, one more. Nice. One more. One more. <laughs> one more. That's all for this week. Thanks for watching Rugby Tonight, the best bits. And don't forget to hit subscribe. See you next time.